Hi, everyone. Welcome to Caring Conversations. You're joining Pastor Susan and Pastor Lillian for another episode. Looks like we're at episode 41 of Caring Conversations. And um, I think about when we started, Caring Conversations was um, kind of birthed at the beginning of the shutdown and or lockdown, whichever word you want to use, of COVID-19. Uh, March 2019, and we're already at episode 41. And so thinking back at how many hours, days, weeks, and months we have been having, um, living through this pandemic, um, Susan, on episode 41, what is the topic that you'd like to bring to us today? Yes. Oh, Lillian, you good day. <laughs> It, it's kind of funny because the, the topic I'm bringing today, I've named lament, but it also goes very well with grief. I could have named it grief. And if you look back to episode one, it was grief. And here we are all these many months later, and it's wait still. But today I wanted to bring up the, the topic of lament, which as we're um, sharing about this this morning, I'm thinking the ability to express our grief, to lament, express pain, get it out of our bodies, our minds, our hearts, um, to name it, which is one of the goals of this podcast, was to be able to name the things of this season um, so that they would not overtake us, but we'd have a, a chance at some healing through this and actually growing in wisdom Lily and I was in a, a store the other day and there was a clerk near me. They had just asked if they could help me find anything. And then another clerk came over to them kind of quickly and they duck their heads together and whisper, but it's in the whispering that, you know, everybody hears. And um, they, they finally settle on what they're going to do, but they wrap up, they close their little conversation with this, which is everyone has gotten so mean. They're mm -hmm. just so mean. And they both had just these really deep nods and you could tell how much they were feeling it. Yeah. And I'm guessing that all of us have felt that or seen it or known it over these last several months, that things just seem a little bit more chippy. Mm. <laughs> People have short fuses and there seems to be some anger and well, in these shopkeepers words, mean, meanness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, as you think, as you say that, I think about the word that came to mind was jagged edged. You know, it seems like everyone is walking around um, broken and with jagged edges. So it's like you don't get too close or you have to be a little bit careful and defensive. Mm -hmm. And it is um, creating an environment where Maybe you're just going into the store for some ice cream and ice cream is supposed to be joyful, but, uh, and a treat, <laughs> but then it's a little bit, um, layered with, oh, so in like the server was mean or the customer was mean. And yeah, isn't that true? Um, yeah, we're seeing it all over the place. We are. And it's, I think the reality of such an extended season of um, COVID, of challenges, just because there was a time where we felt like, oh, we're coming out of it and then drop back in with the Delta variant. I think people are, in a sense, maybe they wanted to be over it, but you know, you're not over it. And, you know, it made me think that this is such, um, this is like grief. We are, well, because it is grief things have changed so much. And whether we're trying to settle into a new normal, which is really a new abnormal normal, but trying to live into that, it's the reality of all that change is that we're experiencing a lot of loss. But trying to get back to normal, or we've been doing this for a while, we're used to this. It's maybe we're not seeing that there is perhaps some more lamenting and grieving to do through this. We are still, I don't want to say in the middle of it, but we're still in it. Mm -hmm. So I know um, you, you know this so well too, but um, the teachings of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, you've brought them up before in stages of grief that we have that like there's denial 
what? This isn't happening. This isn't even a thing. Um, anger. <laughs> We've already described that. One. I think that's where we're at is I a lot of anger. A uh -huh. lot of anger. Mm -hmm. um, bargaining. Would you just wear your mask and then maybe this will do it. If we could just do this with that. Um, depression. I know I have felt it just kind of, do we feel muted and low? Maybe I think I'm just going to stay home, whatever it is, kind of that lack of desire to get out. And then we hope we will get to an acceptance. And I'm wondering if we might have prematurely said, okay, this is just the way it is, but settled into some more of those other right. stages. Right. Um, and wouldn't it be nice if those were linear stages and we knew, oh, so many months in this one or that, but really it's kind of this cycle or waves that we roll in and out and we are riding waves right now. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yes, what I want to give you an opportunity there. What's it like for you riding these waves or do you see that oh, too? Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Um, I am so appreciative of the research um, that is has been produced regarding grief because it seems to be the perfect overlay of what we're going through. And there is no like check. I'm I'm done with denial. Right now, I can move on to bargaining, or yeah. I'm done with being angry, and then I can just move on to acceptance. I wish that we worked that way, but we don't. I mean, sometimes it's within the same day you can be. Um, accepting and then be angry <laughs> and then be depressed and then be in denial. It can go, you know, it's not a, it, like you said, it's not linear. So definitely there's waves. Yeah. Um, so it's, we, oh, oh, and I was going to say it's these waves. And sometimes we have a hard time discerning, like, yes. what am I feeling? Yes. And I think that's, uh, have you ever heard those analogies? Like there's a little fish swimming in water and then um, like, oh goodness, the, like another fish will come along and say something about, or the guru fish, whatever that is, will say um, something about the water that they're swimming in. And they're like, what water? I think yeah. we're swimming in grief, like all the time, because it's such change and such loss, we're swimming in it and we maybe don't know it. We've been in it so long, we're used to it. It, it like, oh, this is just what we're in. Mm -hmm. um, and so <laughs> recognizing this might help us yeah. through. Yeah. And I came across a quote this week um, from, he's a pastor and a counselor and author. His name is Chuck DeGroote. And it's this, he says, the beauty of lamenting your pain is that your cynicism is refined into grief. Your scapegoating is refined into trust. Your anxiety is refined into rest. That quote is so profound because just the first few words, the beauty of lamenting is such an oxymoron initially. Yeah. I think how can there ever be beauty in lament? But as he... Um, unravels that idea, the beauty of lamenting our pain. And you see this transformation. Um, cynicism is refined into grief. Scapegoating is refined into trust. And anxiety is refined into rest. That transformation that we can experience in the Lord is beautiful. Yes. Um, Yes, and I love how you said that in the Lord. There's a verse in Psalm 10. Um, it's 1014. It says, but you, God, see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it in hand. And just, just that first portion of that verse tells us the Lord is so aware of us, right? And even holding us in hand, like in the presence of God. And so that gift of being able to lament, which I would describe as expressing our sorrow, expressing the pain, that it could go then like even through a sieve to be refined into these beautiful things. Mm -hmm. um, but if we don't express it, get it out, it's like shoving um, something that has injured you further down where it just continues to fester. Mm -hmm. And so the lamenting lets that come out and become something else. 
Uh -uh. Uh, I'd like to share this very crude image, but we had to replace the plumbing in our sink, in our bathroom sink. And uh, oh, well, it was just the sink that we had to replace. And as we were um, taking out the pipe, it was disgusting. I'm just going to be very <laughs> honest. And so that image that you just shared of like that sieve, um, unless we dump it all out so that we can be in, in the Lord's sieve so that he could refine and filter out. Um, all we're doing is plugging ourselves up like that yeah. sink drain. Yeah. Um, and uh, no one likes to be plugged up like a sink drain. It's gross. No one likes that. It doesn't, it creates backflow. Right? Yes. We, and we don't want that. We don't want that. And it might even make us mean. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That it makes us oh frustrated yes. and angry and chippy with one another and defensive and mm -hmm. so when you say lament is expressing expressing our sorrow and expressing ourselves what we're saying is we're ex letting it out giving it to the lord yes even in yes our meanness and our anger to the lord and letting him refine that like a yeah. sieve so yeah. that he could then, um, by the power of the Holy Spirit, transform, right? That cynicism, yeah. like that anger, meanness yeah. into, into grief, which is beautiful. Yes. Um, and yes. Because it's a healing process. Then. Yes. Mm -hmm. It allows us to get into that channel of healing and I wonder, you know, it made me think of times when if you've ever had someone who was maybe angry or chippy with you and you're like, huh, where did that come from? And, or those jagged edges, and you are able to just say, I'm sorry, that really, your day has been awful and watch them soften, right? And see it, it change. That's in a sense, a lamenting that got channeled. But what we're inviting people to do is to do that before the Lord, to let the yeah. Lord do that. But it's so, but this is actually real things. It, emotion, even in, in our body, it's a physical thing. So I'm going to say, like, find someone to talk with, right? You could talk it out. And maybe you've got a friend or I hope you do. Or I know Lillian and I would be happy to be this person with you. You can just say all the things. You don't have to edit them. You don't have to say, worry about, oh my goodness, does someone know I actually am thinking these angry thoughts? Just someone you can get it out with. So talk or write it out. Um, draw, run, something, you know, it might be run around your park and break sticks, <laughs> go for a walk, lift heavy things. Um, it's giving that emotion space to come out and lament in all of those. And it may feel weird. It may not to you, but say, Lord, receive this. I'm here just that even in your own self, knowing I'm doing this with the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, I love those tips. I think those are great ways. Um, not, and what you're doing is inviting us to go beyond just our brains and ourselves and you, our bodies recognize our bodies. Um, they hold our emotions. And so find a healthy way to, to express that lament. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I want to, I think for the last thing, just share that quote one more time. And invite the Lord to, Lord, help bring beauty out of this difficult space. Here it is. The beauty of lamenting your pain is that your cynicism is refined into grief. Your scapegoating is refined into trust. Your anxiety is refined into rest. Hmm. Amen. Well, thank you, Susan, for bringing this to us and for another great, caring conversation. And thank you all for joining us. Until next time, take care.